Thank you so much for attending our poster today. Today we're looking at patterns in Yukon River sea surface temperature at the river mouth in the Norton Sound and in the Gulf of Alaska. Our total study area is from 52 to 70 north and 165 to 180 west. The rationale for this study comes from the idea that fisheries at the Yukon River mouth have been suffering in recent years due to changes in temperature and changes in salinity. This study is primarily focused on temperature. However, we do hope to approach um, synoptic scale salinity in future studies at the Yukon River mouth. Uh, so years with warm sea surface temperature causes earlier river flux shifting from the springtime to the winter and then may also change river discharge as well. So this has implications for biodiversity. For example, it's been reported that a reduction in August freshwater flux could reduce the spawning of Chinook salmon. Um, other factors may include reduced wintertime ice days and an increased number of fall floods that might also reduce uh, fishery productivity. So in this study, we tested whether published sea surface temperature indices in August from the PDO taken from two data sets from the University of Tokyo and the NOAA are related to August sea surface temperature at the Yukon River mouth in the Gulf of Alaska using the GHR SST microwave and infrared remote sensing satellite data set over the time period 2003 to 2020. We also compared these values to air temperature at the river mouth, air temperature at the river headwaters, water vapor, precipitation, volumetric uh, river discharge from the Arctic Great Rivers Observatory. So when we look at August means of um, river temperature at the river mouth and compare these to air temperature, we ver get a very close correlation with reanalysis air temperature from Mara 2 of 0.85 from 2003 to 2016. Um, and then we also get a uh, a close coupling of in C2 river temperature at the Yukon headwaters um, with air temperature over the headwaters of 0.71. Uh, now the apparent decoupling of um, SST uh, at the river mouth in the later years of the study from 2017 to 2020 are also reflected um, in some down regulation uh, that we noticed in the cumulative sum regime shift test that we did later in the study and that can be seen in the third panel down in the study on the right hand side. Uh, we did this cumulative sum regime shift test both at the Yukon River headwaters um, and at the Yukon River mouth. And we found a lag between the Yukon River mouth and the Yukon headwaters that also suggests uh, possible warming that may be increasing inward uh, over the length of the study. And this is something that we'd like to look at a little bit further. Um, in the lower uh, left-hand panel, we see a comparison of the GHR SST MWIR data set uh, with the Echo Fecate um, climatology uh, extending back to 1992. And we see uh, warm panels um, from 1992 to 1998, and then a cooler panel from 1999 to 2002, and then also similar panels uh, from 2003 to 2020, uh, suggesting that uh, an extension of the ECHO model uh, with the parameters in our study uh, might be a good idea. And so we're hoping to look at a model with realistic discharge in the, in the near future. Other analyses that we did in this study included a principal component analysis that can be seen in the lower middle panel um, that uh, suggested that air temperature very closely follows river mouth temperature over the course of the study, uh, uh, echoing our August comparison. And um, we also saw that in uh, the middle panel years, which are low SST years, especially in 2010 um, and 2014, we have high, um, high rainfall in years where we have low SST. 
uh, suggesting increased uh, runoff during this time period. So this, these are some areas that we'd like to look at further um, with additional model runs. Uh, thank you so much for taking a look at our poster and uh, please feel free to contact me if you'd like to discuss anything any further. Thanks again.